Today we're going to have a look at how to create some sections and elevations from a 3D model. So this is a house design I've been playing with. Uh, so a very large house and it's fairly detailed modeled just in a conceptual sort of stage, not really anything beyond that. But we're going to use this model, again which is developed, to be able to generate two-dimensional elevations and sections from it. Um, exterior elevations only at the moment. So when we create our elevations and sections, we, we're using our floor plans mostly to do that. Uh, I have some existing elevation and section markers over here. I've moved these away just so I can create them for you. I'm going to use the same settings and I'm going to explain the settings a bit for you as well today. In the elevation tool, which we find on the left hand side in our toolbox. Uh, down the bottom of our document, so we can reduce these if we want to, reduce, get rid of the design box, document box, and we have more down the bottom. We don't need that one at the moment. Uh, these are shown graphically and if we hover over it we can also see the name. So in terms of the elevational tool, once we've selected that tool we can then go into the info box and then we can see the settings of the elevation settings. So under general uh, this is our the names. Now we can give a reference ID and a name for whatever we want. The way that I have this set up is that it shows the reference ID on the screen. So N1 we can see if we change that to N. Let's change that to N2. We've already got one N which is why it's not in the latest do that at the moment. North elevation. So let's just change this to north, uh, put it in caps. So if we wanted to write north, what's the, the symbol? The symbol is based on the marker symbol and text. So I'm choosing just to show this black triangle. Of course, there's a lot of other options as well. Um, the, my method, particularly again for a conceptual design, is not to have it referenced, whereas if we chose a different style, we could chose to put uh, a reference number, so a number of the drawing on a page, and then a page number as well for proper referenced documentation. Now coming moving down here, in terms of our horizontal range, we've got a few different options. So infinite means that we can see everything in the entire model or project, and limited meaning that we're only showing a, a limited view rather than going through all these settings just like this I'm going to um, place it and then we can have a look to see what that means again that'll help a lot on such a large project most importantly before we fin before we move on our vertical range we want this to be infinite if we were doing an internal elevation we'd definitely be using a limited height but for an external elevation we, we generally want infinite and in this case we are uh, using an, an auto rebuild model, uh, which means the as I change things in the 3D, it will automatically update in my elevation. And I want my marker to show on all stories. I could choose to limit that if I wanted to. Down in the model display, I'm currently choosing to represent the fills in terms of the elevational elements as cut fills and the uncut elements, so these are the sectional elements even though there won't really be many sectional elements and these are the elevational elements or the things we're not cutting through using their own surface colors so again we'll talk about that in a minute. Now in terms of story settings I don't want to show story settings if I was to show that these would be based on my current stories instead what I'll choose to do and explain later is I'll use my own lines and elevation dimensions in order to be able to describe where those stories are in a more detailed way than just using this option here. And then grid tool, I don't want the grid tool to be on. Uh, I'm not using grids for this particular drawing, so therefore it's not relevant, but we can play with that more later. So in order to represent or show or create our elevation, we first have to draw a line. 
this is the method that we're using, which means it's single. If it was more complicated, so again, I'll show you a more complicated one later, we'll use the staggered line. So I draw a line, I'm going to hold shift to keep it straight. I'm doing it outside of my building, I don't want to be inside of my building. And I'm going to click in the direction I want to see. So we can see that that little triangle is showing us which way. So I'm, I'm looking back at the building. Now in terms of this site, this is north. And so this is our north elevation because it's on the north side of our building. Some people get a bit confused by that and it took me a long time to understand it my first, myself when I was first learning. Now let's view this and see what it looks like and then make some changes as we go. So right click, open with current view settings. Now what we're seeing is, if I zoom out just a little bit, uh, we've got grey on both sides of this screen and then we've got a white section. What does that mean? Based on the length of the elevation I choose to chose to create, that's our limited view, our limited horizontal width. So I said a unlimited or an infinite vertical uh, size or limit, but my horizontal size limit is defined by what I chose to represent the marker as. Now we see this is a little bit confusing because it's such a big building, it's hard to tell what's in our foreground and what's in our background. So one thing that we can do, uh, we're also not seeing a lot of the buildings in front of us because we've got this wall in front of us which is a courtyard wall. So what do we do about that? I could either turn the courtyard wall off, so hide it. So now we're talking about layers or layer combinations, so option element attributes layer settings. I could use a particular type of layer combination which means turning on or off individual layers in order to be able to hide that. So we've got this one here and we'll call this one boundary wall. So if I was to go into my elevational uh, layer combination, elevations, I'm going to make sure that my boundary wall is turned off. If that wasn't, I could click it update and now it would be turned on or turned off update if I don't press update it won't save so I need to make sure I update when I make changes now I'm going to select this wall here this wall is currently called RMD wall exterior and I'm going to put this onto the wall called boundary wall so it turns off again I have to be thoughtful about what that means because that will change my representation in floor plan and in elevation, but for now that's what I want. I'm just going to do one thing at a time as well, just so you can see what I'm, what I'm doing and the progression of what we're trying to create. So let's open that again, open current view. So that wall is now deleted. What am I seeing? I'm seeing here another wall which is projected below. Now normally we'd expect to be seeing a, a site but we don't have that in this case because I've turned it off. So let's go back into Option, Element, Attributes, Layer, Settings. And I'm going to turn on my Terrain Existing or Terrain New Update. OK. And this is the site. And we can see that based on the settings of the sectional elements that I had before, that when I'm cutting through something I want to turn it white, that's what we're seeing here. And so that's good, but because this is a big site and what I'm doing is creating cut and fill, what I've done is instead of modeling the new site as a terrain mesh, I've used slabs and, and roof tool to be able to represent that, and that's what we're seeing here. So if I was to go into 3D, it's hard to sometimes tell exactly what we're looking at in the 2D elevational view. We can see that we've got a, a large terrain mesh underneath, which is more natural across the site. But then we've got more artificial levels in front of that, which we're creating in order to be able to fill and, of course, to be able to cut into our site as well. So we don't want to keep that setting. Let's turn that back off. If we go back to our elevation settings, elevation. Our terrain is currently turned on because we added it, so we need to go back into our layer settings, turn it off, update, OK, and that will now delete. 
So we see that we're, we're limited or we're missing some information, uh, but it's fine for now for what we're trying to show. So how do we deal with that in terms of viewing the elevation that doesn't look quite right? Let's go back to our floor plan, select this, open current view. It's good to understand where our terrain actually is. And what I tend to do um, once I've created this is, again, not a proper BIM method necessarily, but what I might do to represent this is to draw a fill, to be a bit careful with this to make sure it's drawing in the right place, that's representing what I'm trying to see. Again, in this instance it's not real anyway uh, because we've deleted that courtyard wall, but what we're trying to do is explain where the ground level would be or should be. Just going to fudge this for now just to keep it simple. So we may end up using something like this, just a, a big white fill which covers everything below the ground level which we shouldn't see, just to represent this. Now I would never draw this fill without knowing exactly where it should go. Uh, so generally I would keep the terrain mesh on and then trace the terrain mesh or trace the new level and I'd always have another line for instance, let's turn that back on temporarily, terrain existing. layer, hide layer, we'll send that to the back for a second and maybe I might use a polyline with a, a long dash and a, a very thick pen and then I would I keep grabbing that line represent our existing condition with a polyline and let's go back and update those settings. So now we're still able to see where that existing line should be and we've got that fill overriding it as well. So that we're building up the, the methodology of the way that we view an elevation. Now what happens if we don't want to see everything in elevation or maybe we want to try to differentiate between what's in the foreground and what's in the background? How would we do that? If we go back to our floor plan, we can select our elevation marker, go into the elevation settings, and under model display, we have an option here called marked distant area. I'm going to tick this, and what it's giving me the option is, again just like before, what sort of settings do we want to use to describe this? I could say nothing, I don't want to see anything, but that's not really going to be helpful. What I want to do is a uniform pen colour, and I'm going to use a grey in this case. I'm going to turn off the vectorial hatching, and so what I'm creating is like a, a fog or a fog of war if you're a gamer, trying to represent this in a way that's saying that things that are further into the distance don't display as clearly. And you see that it brought up this second line. Now I can stretch this second line to be as far as I want. What I'm trying to do, I'm going to go up to the roof to explain this to you a bit better, is I'm making sure that this stretches to just in front of this roof. So when I view this, open current view, we can see all of that back section of this U-shaped house is now not hidden, but represents differently. In order to be able to make these front two boxes, pavilions, pop a little bit from the elevation. Now again, because it's a pavilion based building, what I would be doing is creating one elevation here, and then a second elevation, perhaps somewhere like here. So we could call this North 2. And then in this case, we're seeing the second half of the building without the part behind it. So we don't need to worry about cutting away. Now, again, we've got a strange situation because while this is an elevation for the top stories, it's actually a basement for the bottom story. So we're going to have to do something similar to the first drawing where we 
conceal it partly using a fill. But I'll get to that in a little bit more detail later. So this is roughly how we create elevations. And just like we did this for our north elevation, we can do this for all of the others as well. So let's call this east and choose where we want to place it. Uh, trying to understand how all of the stories work simultaneously can be difficult. We want it to make sure that we see the entire project, so it needs to be long enough. We, and if, it, if we feel it's not long enough, we can grab the end and stretch it. And in terms of that marked distant area, maybe we want to extend that so it reaches almost across to the second courtyard. So now when we open this one, we can see there's some areas again that are shown beyond and the majority of the areas we see directly in front of us. Again, we're cutting through some areas, so we'd need to cut them out. Uh, but because it's such a complicated site with complicated levels, it's always going to be the case. And we need to decide what do we want to see and what do we want to hide. So that's elevations. Uh, let's have a look at some additional settings that we could use to adjust this. What would happen if we didn't want to show this alfresco? So we wanted to show maybe the cabana and the main house, but we didn't want to show the alfresco. So we wanted to cut around it. What we could do with this is we could break this halfway. So if I click on the line, I can choose to insert break. And then I can move that forward move this one across to a point where I'm happy with the line that's creating a dog leg of an elevation. Now if I open this, it's mostly going to work. Uh, what we see looks a little bit odd here is that I'm cutting through a balustrade up here and I'm cutting through two slabs which is a, a roof that extends through. So while it mostly works, what I wasn't seeing is this floor looks fine. This story looks like I'm not cutting through anything, but when I go up a story, I, I can see that I'm cutting through this garden roof. And so we have to be very, very careful. And if I wasn't careful, what I could have also have accidentally done would be to cut through the eave. It's very easy to make this mistake. It looks like we're outside of these columns, but when we then look at this elevation again, we can see we've got some little bit of leftover information. So we have to be very careful if we've got some strange bits in our elevation where we're cutting our lines and what does that mean that we're seeing. So it's always good to, to place and then be willing to adjust. It might again mean that I might need to turn off some of these layers. Now that's going to be difficult to turn on and turn off. We can't delete these things. We don't want to delete them from our project but we might want to view them partially or temporarily during some of our elevational creation. Now next we've got our section marker. In the next video we'll have a look at how those work and how they're different from elevations. There's not all that, that many differences but there's a few critical points that we'll need to have a look at.